Hi there friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back for another Pear Blossom Press video. Today we're gonna to be making a baby tag and we are gonna be using the Easy Lights. I love the Easy Lights, well I like all the lights. You guys know that, that's nothing new. I love the lights. We're also bringing in the Pear Blossom Press stamp set. It has a little die set that goes with it. We're bringing in these cute little sparklets. These are the crystal stars. And then we're bringing in this darling stamp set from Trinity Stamps called Gnome One More Adorable and it has matching dies. And then we're bringing in the zip gift tag. I'm just gonna be using the tag, but this die set has some really cool dies that you can use along with it. And then we have some Lindy's Gang powders to make our background. So we'll talk about that when we get started on that background, which will be now. I'm gonna bring in some mixed media paper. That's from scrapbook.com. And I usually use watercolor paper, but I thought I'd try. And I will tell you this stuff works great. It isn't textured, it's nice and smooth, unlike watercolor paper. And this stuff is gonna work great on there. All I'm doing is kind of just sprinkling some of that on there. I am using some Impressionist's ink, Alive and Kissing Cobalt, and Every Picture Teals a Story. And I'm just sprinkling all three of those powders over the top, getting them, you know, all over that. And then I'm going to bring in this Lindy's Glitz Spritz, which means it has some sparkle to it. It's got some glimmer in there. And I'm spraying that all over that. And I think that background is starting to look good. And so then we're going to spray some water over the top of that now. And then I'm gonna bring in a paintbrush because I do like the background, but I really want those colors to meld a little bit more. My, my goal here was to make this look like a night sky. And by using all three of the different colors of powder that I decided to use, and then bringing in the paintbrush to kind of just move that color around a little bit, I think we ended up accomplishing what I was going for. And so I'll clean off my brush and then I'll bring it in on those lighter colors and I it's just really doing what I wanted it to do. You see bits of yellow, some bits of purple in there, the teal, the navy blue, green, and, and it just, this background ends up being so, so pretty. And yeah, I've got some pooling on the sides, but we're gonna bring in our heat tool and we're gonna move that around. So we'll heat set this for quite a while. You can already start to see some of that shimmer. It's kind of moving with the water and hitting the light. And so once I'm done heating this and I show you in the light, you're gonna just be like, wow, that is that is very, it has a lot of shimmer. Now the powders that I used did not have shimmer in them. It's when I brought in that glitz spritz. That's where the shimmer came from. And Lindy's Gang does have some that have the, the shimmer in them, but the patterns that I choose, chose for this background did not. So we're heat setting that, we're moving it around. I'm even gonna flip it over and we'll heat set the back of it also, cause you wanna make sure that your, your whole paper is nice and dry. And I didn't have time to just let this sit and dry on its own. That probably would have worked fine as well, but the heat tool also works. We'll clean up our mess dry that background a little bit more and then set it off to the side to do even more drying. But yeah, I just think this background turned out better than I had hoped. And I love when that happens. So look at all that shimmer. Love it. All right, so now we do need to move on to doing our coloring of our darling little gnome image. And this is the gnome that I've chosen. To save a little time, I did stamp out our gnome onto some blending cardstock. It's the Express It blending cardstock. That's my favorite for alcohol marker coloring. It's just super, super smooth. And I used some blackout ink by Ink on 3. There's a lot of great inks out there. Um, one of my favorites is Memento. I don't even know if that's available anymore, but that, that was definitely one of my favorites. I do really like the... Um, blackout ink by ink on three but sometimes you do need to heat set the ink before you can move on to coloring otherwise you can smear that ink and i've done that plenty of times but i know there are a lot of great black inks out there for that i am using my olo markers and i have recently actually been combining both my olos and my copics quite a bit but the olos are really where i'm um, spending a lot of my time and so i've got those blues and i'll put those up on the screen for you i'm just going back and forth and blending that color out and then I actually do bring in, I think it's the blue 2.1 to, to blend in the center, but I didn't show that. So now we're bringing in our yellow oranges. We've got YO 2.3 for the stars and for the little moon on his, his or her hat. I'm assuming this is a little boy. He's so cute. Um, but obviously you could color him however you wanted. And then I'm bringing in OR 1.1 for his, 
his skin and then the OR 2.2 for some shadowing and shading. Once again, you have lots of options there for how you'd want to color that. For his little leaf, we've got some YG 8.5 and then I will bring in some YG 8.7 for the shadowing and shading and then I'll blend that out again using that YG 8.5. But this little image is just, I think he's hes my favorite in this stamp set. He's so cute. I've colored him a few times, and I just can't get enough of it. <laughs> he's so cute. Uh, I think I love it because of the star hat, because he's sleeping. And then we add a little bit of some grays on his diaper. I'll bring in those matching dyes, and yes, there are matching dyes even for the sentiments. So we're going to tack that down with some uh, mint tape, pardon my head, and then we'll run that through our die cutting machine. I'm also going to grab the tag out of the uh, zip gift tag and then we'll cut that out of the paper, the background that we made along with some white cardstock. And then I'm going to start playing around with the placement of things. Now that I have an idea of where I want the gnome to go, I am going to poke three holes into our background. The reason for that is because the easy light has three lights to it and I'm going to use all three of those lights. Once I've got where my holes are, I'm going to put my picket stick or pickup stick back in there and really move that around so that hole gets a little bit bigger so it'll be easier to see the lights. And I've pulled out one of the easy lights and then I'm going to assemble that. Sorry, not on screen there. You just put the battery in plus side up and then make sure that you're testing as you go to attach down our lights. I like to do the lights first before I put anything else down because that's the most important part. I'm going to use some just some clear scotch tape and we're gluing or taping it right over the top of the hole. Because it's that clear scotch tape you're not going to see it and so I want to make sure that that light is in the hole and of course testing as I go along and then I can play around with where that mechanism is going to go. Now I am going to have it um, the Pear Blossom Press emblem is going to be facing towards us for now, but it will get glued down to the other part of the background. And now I'm just kind of winding up the cords and I'll tape that down. It doesn't need to look pretty back there. No one's going to see it. So I don't put a lot of concern on that. And I'm just, again, using that scotch tape to tap, uh, tape everything down. Just making sure that everything stays in place and I don't hinder the lights at all. Our next step would be to add some foam tape on the back of that because you're going to need a little bit of lift there since we have a mechanism. And so I brought in the world's best foam tape by Pear Blossom Press. And no joke, it absolutely is. It never gunks up my scissors. It's super easy to peel off the release paper. And you also have about, I forget how much time, it may, might be about 30 minutes of wiggle room there. If you put your, you know, you put your tape down in the wrong spot, you can pick it up in the first little bit and then after a day it is completely permanent. I'll use some double-sided adhesive on the back of the mechanism and then we're just going to peel all that release paper off all of the tape. Keeping in mind I did put all that tape down avoiding where the lights are. You can put it over the cords that's not a problem you just don't obviously want to put it over your lights. And then once all the release paper is pulled off of there then I can attach down my white tag to the back. Now, I, I, if I had been thinking, I would have done that. There, I would have done some stamping first, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Now, I'm going to attach down our darling little gnome to the front, and he's so cute. And then that's when I'm going to bring in those crystal stars. Those are buttons galore and more, and I believe that they are in the Pear Blossom Press store, so I'll have those linked down below. Uh, there's a couple different kinds in here. There's some clear ones, which is what I'm going to put over the lights. And then there's a couple of little iridescent ones that I'll use. And those are a little bit bigger too. So I like that there's different sizes in here. And I am going to be fairly liberal with putting those on because they're just really cool. Like I said, I wanted this to be a night scene. Before I attach any of that down, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out the sentiment that says press here. That comes from that Pear Blossom Press stamp set. And then I'm going to trim that down really tight around it. And now we can glue down our stars. For those iridescent stars that are not over the lights, you just go ahead and glue them down. But for the ones that are going over the lights, I am using that glue around the circle. So I'm not putting it directly on the light. I'm just going around the circle. And my pickup stick is picking up those lights or the uh, stars and then putting those down. And then I can glue down our press here. And then I can glue down our gift for baby. And then everything is now glued to the front just like I needed it to be. It's so great. And then here's where I decided to stamp on the back, which you can guess 
did not work. <laughs> but I thought I'd leave it in there to show you that we can fix this. I tried to even double stamp over the top of it, did not work. So I die cut out another one of those tags, stamped my stamp on the back that says handmade for you. And then I also have another one, sorry, it's gonna be off screen a little bit, that actually says handmade by Cassie Trask. And so I'm gonna stamp that down below and then now we can take this and glue this to the back of our tag. It's gonna cover up that mistake. No one will know except all of you that watched this video. <laughs> so it's all good, we figured it out. I do bring in some baker's twine that I had in my stash. This stuff matches perfectly. It's got that blue and that green. And you can see how I'm tying that on there. And then what's left of the, the uh, twine that I have, I'm gonna tie a bow around our little hold and once that bow is on there i think that's going to finish off our tag i love this tag so much you could attach this to like a just a craft bag however you want to do it but this would be a cute little keepsake for the baby that comes right oh i love it i can't wait to use it and i hope you like it too if you do please hit that like button definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already done so and be sure to check out all the Pear Blossom Press has going on over on their blog, Facebook page, and Instagram for more crafty inspiration. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you soon.